What's up, my people? I'm excited. It's the second episode of the year. I feel more comfortable. My voice will crack last week. Don't day okay. You're welcome to the Digital Assets Show. You're one and only Bitcoin exclusive. You know I'm a Bitcoin maxi, so I'm going to favor Bitcoin all the time. Digital Assets Show on television. The Internet Money Podcast. Only on Pop Central. Channel 189 on DSTV. The only cryptocurrency show on national television all around 17 West African countries and I think and more you can watch us also on the popping application whether it is iOS or uh, or, or Android you can just download and you can watch us live okay I am Olua Shegun your regular host with the most you know I bring all the info to you I bring the special guests I bring those brilliant people that educate us about blockchain and Bitcoin and today I have another special person in the building. He's a young man, a uh, smart uh, individual, a Bitcoin core developer, very unique individual. Uh, some of you would like to call people like him a blockchain engineer, but I call him a Bitcoin developer because uh, that skill, no plenty. Uh, he's a full stack and a back end engineer. Uh, uh, he's a computer scientist. You know, anything technology solutionist is the co-founder of the best technologies. And um, of course, is our guy from Bot Make Cash. Please welcome Rafael Okonola. Please, Rafael, use your microphone. Please. All right. <laughs> You're welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Let me, let me. Thank you. Yeah. So, Rafael, I know um, I'm putting you on the spotlight. Developers like you don't come on national television to come and talk, but it's very important we start to have this conversation uh, in the open. Uh, there is a national blockchain policy from NITA. NITA is National Information Technology Development Agency under the, I think, Federal Ministry for Inf Communications and uh, I think technology, something like that. Uh, and um, there is a virtual asset service provider guideline slash license that will be issued. So SEC, CBN has also lift, lifted the ban. So SEC and CBN are now open to crypto. Uh, Nigeria is open to blockchain. Um, so that's why I brought you here. You know, people like you, you know, need to start um, helping people sensitize uh, uh, the, 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 the environment and let people know what these technologies uh, that we call cryptocurrency actually is. But before we go into the nitty gritty, I would like to get to know you, uh, give you the opportunity to introduce yourself. In a short, maybe like max, like two minutes, just tell us your, your name, your background, uh, uh, what you do, you know, so people will not um, think that there's one guy who just wear a shirt and trousers, just gonna sit down for camera, so they know that uh, you, you have what it takes to be here, that's why you're here, so you have the floor. All right, thank you. So my name is Rafael Timitope Okunala. So, uh, I'm a blockchain engineer and uh, also a backend engineer. So uh, I'm part of the team that works on Botme Cash and also currently working on Botme Cash. So uh, that's little things about me. <laughs> they don't talk too much. When you are brilliant, you are brilliant. So um, quickly, um, so let's talk about Bitcoin. You work on Botme Cash, right? And that's a Bitcoin company. And I know we do Bitcoin only. My concern is why Bitcoin only? Because people ask me, I, I, I keep explaining to them, I'm not tired of explaining, but I wanna ask you, um, why, why a company that is focused on Bitcoin only? And what is that Bitcoin? So I want, to, I want you to pick it from why Bitcoin only for Bot My Cash? And then what is that Bitcoin that you guys are working on? All right. Um, Bitcoin, um, I would like to use, I would like to say Bitcoin is like the king of other currency, other cryptocurrency. So um, Bitcoin, as it is, uh, it's going to be on the next big thing. And actually, it's actually, it's, it's actually the, the, the big thing now. And also, uh, if we look at it in the next five to six years, so uh, we are going to, they are, all, all countries are going to, Adopt it because in Nigeria now we are, as you can see, we are moving forward in Nigeria regarding the cryptocurrency and Bitcoin as it is. So, and uh, I believe, uh, and that is going to give the community an edge over other currency too, cryptocurrency. 
Okay, good, 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 good. So what is Bitcoin? For people that don't know what Bitcoin is, you're a software developer, you have interacted with the Bitcoin core. How would you explain Bitcoin to a layman? But give them an explanation that a software person can understand and, of course, a layman can understand. Oh, okay. Um, Bitcoin is an asset hmm. on its own. Hold your thought. I love that. So some people say, me, I would have ordinarily said Bitcoin is money. Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash, like the white paper. But I love the fact that you picked it up from assets. So that's a unique way of introducing Bitcoin definition. So go ahead. So uh, when we look at Bitcoin, I said it's an asset. So um, Bitcoin, uh, as it is, you will see that um, young Youths like me, this is, uh, they are diving into cryptocurrency. They see the opportunity coming, and they see that it's, it's good for them to actually dive into it and uh, lay hold of the opportunity. So um, Bitcoin is an asset, and uh, uh, I would advise anybody watching us uh, to also try as much as possible to get part of the, of the assets. Good. Uh, how many Bitcoins do we have? Uh, well, do you mean uh, um, totally or? Yeah, I mean, in to in to okay, so in total and, and available for people to maybe buy or, or, yeah, or have access to. All right. Um, the Bitcoin we have in total or that is going to be um, minted in total is 21 million. So there's nothing can be above that. It can never be above that. So we can't have more than 21 million. Are, are you sure that nobody can go and reprint Bitcoin in one corner? Uh, not at all. No. <laughs> not at all. Although it happened um, in the 2010. So, but um, the Bitcoin community were able to mitigate that. So where, that, where um, so, um, this was exploited and, uh, they, and they minted over 184 billion BTC. So within, the 50, within 15 minutes, another uh, fashion of Bitcoin was built and uh, they mitigate the risk. Beautiful. So, um, so can Bitcoin be hacked? Okay. Uh, well, uh, for now, um, where technology is now, Bitcoin is not hackable. So they can hack Bitcoin now. And also, if they want to hack Bitcoin, they, I believe the community is stronger than any other thing. So they are going to guide against it. <laughs> you know, you talk very softly. For people that are just watching, uh, I understand who Raphael is. It's a, you know, they just write codes. They, they, they're not like us. We can talk, talk, talk for Africa. So um, I want people who are watching now to, who have, been, who have been like skeptical about investing in the asset Bitcoin, you know, for the fact that Nigerian governments now have, you know, started putting their ears down to... Maybe they want to harness whatever, you know, good, goodness that is coming from, you know, this so-called blockchain cryptocurrency industry. Uh, do you think that uh, we have enough human uh, capacity to help the, the government really, really um, achieve this goal of maybe taxing Bitcoin or, or exploiting the positivity that comes out of cryptocurrency and blockchain? Or do you think we have the right, the enough talent, enough um, uh, education uh, around, enough to go around, or, or, or is something that needs to be worked on? All right. Um, so, where? Uh, as it is now, the Bitcoin community is still growing. And uh, I can say that we already have enough that is sufficient for us to, uh, to have um, what it, we have what it takes for the Bitcoin community. But also, you know, uh, I won't say we still have enough. We still have to do more in Bitcoin. So, and uh, at Botman Cash, uh, I believe, and I know fully away that this uh, our vision is part of our vision, and uh, we have already have it. Um, yes, that's, that was like four years ago. We already know that uh, something like this is going to happen. And that's uh, my, my boss here. So I uh, already prophesied that they are going to uh, regularize Bitcoin. <laughs> I'm a and prophet. Uh, yes, know. yes. So, and so it has happened now. So, and, uh, so it's also an avenue for people uh, to be part of it and also not to be skeptical about Bitcoin. So uh, I will advise them to join the moving train now because before it's going to be too late. Because if it's too late, they won't be able to 
uh, join the train again. So that's what I was Too late. Anybody that hears the word late feels that there is something there. Okay. Uh, so why, why would it ever be too late for somebody to acquire an asset? So I, 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 I'll, I'll, say, I'll say it from my own angle. This is how I tell people. I say, look, if they tell you to buy Lekki now, you, you say you don't have the money. Why? Because maybe when they told you initially you didn't buy, it became too late. But, but the parts of Lekki that you can buy now is very expensive, except you have a lot of money. So if they tell you to buy maybe Ekbe or somewhere that is affordable for you now on the island, and you say, ah, no, 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 it's waterlogged, it's this, is that. In another five years, knowing how real estate is big in Nigeria and in Lagos to be precise, you would realize that, oh, that was a bad decision not investing in that landed property. And, I, and you say Bitcoin is an asset. Is it comparable to real estate of such level of asset? And, and why can it ever get too late? Okay. All right. Why I said it's going to be too late is because, oh, okay, let me relate it with uh, one of the discussions I had with my friend uh, not quite long. That was a week ago. So we're talking about um, people having assets. So he made mention of something. He said uh, in the nearest five years or three years, it's going to be difficult for people to have assets, to have buildings if they don't if they don't invest in that, because you look at the inflation rate and everything, you now make his conclusion like, okay, imagine someone earning 100,000 era and they, they didn't, the company is working with, they didn't deem it fit to increase, increase the his salary. Increase his, sal his, his or her salary. So imagine the inflation rates are now getting out of hand. So Almost 30%. Now, nah, what do you think the 100,000 can, can, can afford? It can never afford anything. So that's why I say it's going to be difficult for people to enter. Because, you know, um, the rate of inflation and also Bitcoin uh, price is still going to go higher than before. I, I believe that. Very, very soon it's, it's going, it's, it's going yeah, to Yeah, but be especially because the Alvin is in April. Yes. And then yes. Bitcoin price is going to be cut in. Uh, Bitcoin uh, <coughs> block reward is going to be cut in half. So instead of 6.25 BTC, yes, we're going to have 3.125 BTC, yes. which means Bitcoin will be scarcer to buy. Yes. Then once it's, once it's scarcer to buy, obviously it's, the price is going to go up. Uh, you know, a scarce asset, the price definitely goes up. And inflation eats up your wealth, eats up your yes, earnings. Exactly. Your salary is not going up. Uh, goods and services are not enough for too much money that is not even in your own pocket anyway. You know, and, and, and the wealthy ones can actually put more money to buy what would have been ordinarily available for the ordinary people. So the prices go up and then there's, there's no money to, to buy those things. Um, at the end of the day, when you want to get Bitcoin, the price would have gone off your radar. Yeah, exactly. You know, so <laughs> you will have to walk times two, right? Okay, I have a guest um, that I want to bring. Um, she's a security expert, so uh, uh, hold on. I don't know if she's still on the line. Um, my special guest all the way from Abuja on the show is a security, uh, blockchain security expert, a forensic expert. And that's a unique role for a lady. You know, in our climbs, this, this, this uh, nascent days of blockchain in Nigeria, a lady into forensic, um, um, you know, security check for blockchain is really really very unique her name is Chioma Onye Kelu uh, she's a certified crypto blockchain investigator um, she's a forensic specialist and a crypto compliance specialist too uh, she's a registered blockchain educator and a trainer I believe so Chioma if you're right there all the way from the federal capital territory say hello to my viewers and of course Rafael in the studio Hello, this is Chama Yekelo, such currency <laughs> investigator from Abuja. Uh -huh. I'm a blockchain person specialist at AI person. Nice to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh -huh. Nice to have you, Chama. How is Abuja? <laughs> you guys are very close to the seat of power. What's going on there? Is there inflation there? It's normal. It's cool. <laughs> is, is there inflation in Abuja? Inflation, of course, there is. <laughs> there is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. I've been talking to our shy guest, a, a very talented Bitcoin programmer, um, Rafael. And then um, 
I wanted to bring you into the conversation so we can talk about security. I was going to talk about Bitcoin security, but of course, we'll talk about the, the entire scope. But before I do that, maybe you want to give us a background for people that don't know you, uh, a background of who you are uh, and how you got into your forensic specialist role today and why, basically. You have like two minutes to just, you know, paint us, a, uh, establish your credibility in the industry, please. Go ahead. Okay, so thank you so much. I'm Chuma Onyekalu. I'm a certified cryptocurrency investigator, certified cryptocurrency compliance specialist at a and Forensics. So my story is very interesting. I am a teacher by profession. So um, during the COVID season, I found about blockchain and cryptocurrency. So I started to go for that. I started my master's in blockchain and digital currencies in the University of Nicosia, Cyprus, and I had to get much details. And along the line, I also met my boss, Mr. Adedeji Ogunubi, and I told him, before then, I had already lost money, and I was told I can't recover the money. So after attending his webinar, he, so he said we could recover our stolen funds. I was like, wow. I, th I thought they said it, it can't be traced, it can't be recovered. What, for, what also, particular currency was that? <laughs> Okay, then I lost Ethereum then. <laughs> Ethereum. Shitcoin. Go ahead. <laughs> I lost shitcoin. <laughs> okay. So I, I I picked interest and then I went to him. I started my intern at A and as a cryptocurrency. Then I started taking my certification courses, did my um, CCI, my crypto compliance, and then I train at, at the moment and I do investigation in the lab. So we train law enforcement, we train compliance officers of banks, and we also have a training coming up very soon. So that's basically what I do. And people that lose their cryptocurrencies, they come to me and they come to us and then we do the investigations for them, prepare their currency reports and give them assistance with the law enforcement. And it's it's awesome doing this actually. It's very awesome. And I, I feel for people that lose their money, but I tell them, don't lose your money. But when you do, please come to me. <laughs> I can help you. This is a very, very interesting uh, bio. You know, firstly, I want to thank you, Chema, for making it to the show. And I'm very glad that you're a lady uh, and you're doing this. You know, it, it really, um, for women in the ecosystem, it's, it's a win because... You are this. Uh, you you are into this because of your personal experience, and now you decided to go against the the norm. You you decided to fight uh, against whatever it is that that hurts you, and, and and help other people fight. It's a good cause. So um, I, I would like to ask you, what uh, crypto have, have you engaged in the most when it comes to missing funds, uh, or and and also which um, would you suggest has the best security in your engagements? For example, do people come to you and say, oh, uh, I, I lose this particular cryptocurrency and maybe a lot of people come for that. Uh, and do you ever get the opportunity to recommend and say, look, I'm not giving you financial advice, but for security wise, this is how to go about it. Please share your knowledge and experience with me in that aspect. Okay, so when it comes to security, it's it's different a bit because the technology itself is secure. And when it comes to um, Bitcoin blockchain technology itself, it is the most secure compared to other networks. Like um, it's the most secure because of um, the trust that people are already on the network. All right. But when it comes to yes, but when it comes to losing your funds, it's a different ball game altogether because it has to do with things around wallets. So people can get hacked through their wallet. They can get their wallet drained. Probably they've been connecting. Of course, it's a season for airdrops. So people that don't know about this, they connect their regular wallet and then it can get drained. So these are the things that happen. And then when it comes to transaction fees, all right, Bitcoin, Ethereum, they, they are still a bit higher. So this time around, we are seeing a shift from the regular Bitcoin, Ethereum to USDT. So people lose their USDT. And you could now ask, okay, so what's the uh, prevalent network that people currently lose their funds on? It's it's shifting. It's now Tron because, of course, network fee is cheap or Binance Smart Chain. But Tron, it's like it's it's more these days. And then it's not just about the network now. It's about the transaction fee. Because for you to move money, all right, in crypto world, you have to pay transaction fee. So these, these scammers, these bad actors, they want to pay lesser fee. And that is why it is becoming more prevalent for them to use. 
and and that and that's it's not about the blockchain network or the security no it's just about how you keep your wallet safe of course at this moment um, permit me to say the cold wallet storage because we have hot wallets which is connected to the internet we have the cold wallet which is offline like offline so those ones are more secure the ones that are more prone to the internet or to hacks are the hot wallet and it's because it's connected to the internet and not because of the the, the blockchain network you must be well trained at A and D forensic. Uh, you sound very eloquent. Uh, shout out to Ade DG, uh, your boss, because I heard you mention his name. Yeah. It, it's it's good what you guys are doing over there. You know, Thank I you. love it. <laughs> I love it, and um, I, and I love your sincerity. Um, it's 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 very nice. Um, so hold your thoughts. Um, we're, we're, you're still on the show. We're gonna come back to you. Thank you very much. Um, let me yeah. connect what you've just said to our developer here. Now, she spoke about hot wallets, cold wallets. Uh, people think, uh, wallet, 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 wallet. Is it the wallet that you put money in your pocket or the wallet at home? So um, as a developer, how would you explain to our viewers what a crypto wallet is? Okay, Bitcoin wallet. What, what is a Bitcoin wallet? And, and then, uh, what does it contain? Uh, how, how do you even keep it safe? Is it possible to keep it safe? All right, thank you. So, um, Bitcoin wallet is just like your bank account. So, that you save your fast currency. So, whenever you want to receive fund, you send your account number to the sender, and the sender send you this, the amount you want to receive. So, um, Bitcoin wallet can also be said as it's just the same thing as your bank account. So as uh, as, is, as is said now, so Bitcoin, um, we have cold wallet, we have hot wallet. So, and, uh, and the one that is safer is uh, cold wallet because that's not connected to the internet and there's no way uh, an attacker will be able to have access to your uh, recovery phase or anything. Yeah. So um, Bitcoin, wallet is similar to your bank account so so when you, when you say bitcoin wallet is similar to your bank account i have a little bit of a um uh i have a mixed feeling with it as a matter of fact i have an exception exception because i know you're trying to explain to the layman but how does what relationship does bitcoin have with fiat because bank account a lot of people don't want don't want to hear bank for example when you say bank account what they hear is inflation, deductibles. They hear stamp duty. They hear cost of transfer. They hear SMS charges. They hear VAT. Those are the things that people hear. They hear the oh, um, um, network issues. They hear the, oh, it's 4 o'clock. We have closed. You can't come to us. Uh, the POS is not working. All of the flaws of the banks is what they hear. So do you, do you still want to retain... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Retain right. what you said that Bitcoin, uh, it, 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 your Bitcoin wallet is like your bank account. That's simplifying it though, but, or you want to really, really tell the difference between the Bitcoin wallets and of course your bank account. Okay, thank you. So uh, with Bitcoin wallet, yes, it's just like your bank account, but with excluding those um, properties that you just said, you just <laughs> mentioned. So um, Bitcoin is secure. So there is no, if you don't lose your recovery phase or your profit key to anybody, there's no way they are going to be able to assess your fund or um, go away with your fund. So um, Bitcoin, in order to improve your privacy, there is uh, another wallet called Iraqi Deterministic Wallet. So that is like... It's um, HD wallet. Yes, HD in short. So uh, it's like you having a parent and parents giving birth to multiple children. So, and you can have tons of... Um, children, so that also improved the privacy on Bitcoin. So um, I would say uh, Bitcoin is not equivalent to your bank account in terms of uh, charges, high, uh, high charges, uh, maintenance fee, all those um, uh, all those fiat yes, or wanted properties. Edic. Yes. <laughs> so, I like that. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's more than that, and it's not that. But Bitcoin. Uh, is what you can trade, is what you can do, is what anybody can do. So um, if I can do it, everybody can do it. Because Bitcoin, um, I think uh, what the fear people have about Bitcoin is because 
uh, they don't know much information about Bitcoin. So if they know more information, and if uh, a show like this, if we have more of this type of show, it's going to educate people and going to let them know uh, why they should invest in Bitcoin. So, uh, you know, the thing is, people, people, are, people are like, ah, no, now my money, why they see? The one where they see for my hand, now yeah, I know. And, I, I, and this is the worry, this is the fear. I tell people, I say, look at all the biggest companies of the world. Fidelity, Grayscale, BlackRock, you know, Bitwise, all of them. I've now launched a Bitcoin ETF. These are the companies that have invested in all the big companies that you admire, that we interact with, whether it is technology company, whether it is fast-moving consumer goods, whether it is automobile company, health companies. These are the companies that own them. And you are sitting down here, seeing them buying up all the Bitcoins, whereas you had the opportunity or you still have the opportunity to own some, you know, knowing well that we live in an inflationary economy. So I, I try to explain to people that it, it's like iPhone. You know, a lot of people didn't take the iPhone serious for the first 14, 15 years. But look at Apple stocks today. <laughs> you know, look at Netflix stocks today. You can't fight technology. It's going to hurt you. Exactly. And, you know, technology is always ahead of whatever thing you're thinking that is not true. And the moment you, you don't think that it is possible for money to become digital, digital for real, and I'm, not, and I'm not talking about paper money, the only thing that we don't have on the internet now is internet money. But we now have internet money, which is BTC. If it took Bitcoin just about 14 years to take off 99 million plus Satoshis and match up to a dollar parity because it was less than, Bitcoin was less than one cent it, in just about 14 years, still an underage child, is now 40 something thousand dollars. How much longer will it take Bitcoin? for one sat of BTC to become one dollar, dollar parity, because less than 3,000 sats now will give you a dollar. 14 years ago, you need 100 million sats exactly. to give you one Bitcoin. So in other words, what we are trying to say is if you are earning money, you want to protect that money that you're earning because it is energy you are using to earn that money. If you're working so hard, you want to ensure that this energy that you're dissipating, it's generating something for you. Whether you're paid well or not, that time that you have put into it, you want to make sure that you get value for that time. But after the hustle and bustle of the day, facing traffic, you get to work, you get paid eventually at the end of the month, inflation takes 28, 30% off your money, bam. Do you Imagine. understand me? For everything, for salt, toothpaste, bottled water, everything that you do in your, your life. And then you put your money in the bank where inflation continues to eat that money in the bank. So I, I tell people, it's, I'm not advising you to buy Bitcoin because I want to make money from you or because I want Bitcoin to go up. No, it's for your own good because it's, it's people's money, it's everybody's money. Why can't you just protect yourself? Why leave that 100,000 naira, 100 million naira in the bank and it's getting debased over a period of years? If you, that you had 10 million naira in the bank in 2009, 2010, you will have less than the person that used 50 naira to buy one Bitcoin in 2009, 2010. Exactly, yes. You would have less. And so if I invested about... 200 naira in BTC in 2010. Now we have about 100 million plus naira today. And if you had 20 million naira, you would have had less because if you check the month on month, year on year inflation, your money would have been debased, damaged. We are in trouble. <laughs> so I'll go on a quick break. Uh, Chioma is still with us online from Abuja. Rafael, the developer, is still with us. Rafael, uh, yeah, I'm with him. when we come back, we can talk about code too. Uh, no problem, yeah, for you. <laughs> All right, so sit back. It's still the Digital Assets Show. And um, we're going on a quick break. When we come back, we will mass ourselves into more cryptocurrency, blockchain, Bitcoin education. I am Olu or Hasualaji. Don't go nowhere. All right, we're back. 
on das the internet money podcast i am olu and on pop centra it's only where you're going to find this show this conversation is the first of its kind on national television we should be having this conversation it's very very important that we have these conversations cryptocurrency is not something that we should allow go to the black market as if we are doing fx business in the black market right cryptocurrency can enhance uh, FX liquidity in our country can can boost the economy, especially Bitcoin. I'm a fan of Bitcoin. I don't know about what other people are doing. So uh, if it's good, if the project is solid, if it's verifiable, if you know that what you're doing has no shady undertone, especially if it is real world assets tokenization, uh, I'm very interested in that. I mean, reach out to us. We will give you a platform to express yourself. That's what the show is for. Um, every person that is doing something solid in the ecosystem, whether you're from the east, north, south, it doesn't matter. We would give a platform for. So I want to give a big sh- uh, shout out to Pop Central for making that possible. Um, a lot of other TV stations don't have the lever. But Pop Central, Baba. Uh huh. So you're welcome back. Thank you. Raffaello. You know, um, people are worried about Bitcoin. People are worried about uh, on national. Some girls don't know when to call you. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, people are worried about um, Bitcoin fees, network fees, and I, I tell them, I said, look, you don't have to worry about the network fees. The, the freedom Bitcoin gives to you alone, the the growth trajectory of Bitcoin alone is beyond the network fees. And the network fees will even go higher than this, if you understand how I mean. But a lot of people don't understand that. But I want you to explain um, how the network fees work and maybe how it's calculated to, to the viewers. They may not understand the tec- technical nitty-gritty, but please um, explain how did the network fees work. And, and is it something people should worry about? All right. Um, network fee... Um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin network fee. Yes, <laughs> of course. Bitcoin network fee. So it's nothing to worry about and it's nothing to write home about because um, Bitcoin, as you said, the freedom that it brings is more than the fee itself. And also, uh, there are some innovations around Bitcoin. So if you look at it, we have layer two, we have a lightning network, and mm-hmm. that's why bot make cash. You can never find any other product like that. So because on Bot Me Cash, we've looked at the user's um, complaint, yeah, what users are, what's the concerns of the user. So, and uh, we've addressed that using the layer two innovation, which is Lightning Network. So uh, if you are concerned about the um, Bitcoin fee, so I will advise you to go with Lightning Network. So that, 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 that um, encourages, um Tiny transactions exactly. and, and, and cheaper fees, yes. right? And is it safe? Is it secure? Of course, it is secure. Very, very secure. Same security as Bitcoin. So it's very, very secure. I would recommend, anybody, I would recommend it for, any, for anybody to use it. Oh, that's good. So, so what, should people, uh, be, what should people be worried about? What should people be fearful about when it comes to interacting with crypto um because i know that people when you tell people bitcoin now they say oh bitcoin price is too much ah this one is small let me go and buy it bam and they get they get their hands soil into the likes of um uh, wakanda inu <laughs> that's a shit coin anyway and and and, and some other inus some other shit coins um so what should be the fear of anybody out there what what should they mitigate against what should they what should they be careful about because obviously i know there's a there's there's a fear right i know what the fear is but you know you're a developer too so that's why i want that's why i'm asking you this question and how and how should people navigate these fears and go for the right assets class all right so um from my experience i think the fear that people has are, are having is because is that they want to lose that they don't want to lose their money so they have the, that fear because, you know, uh, the way uh, Bitcoin is moving. It's not the Bitcoin that is moving. It's actually the conversion from Bitcoin to any other fiat currency like uh, USD, like NGN. So 
Oh, and that's and that's very important for people to understand exactly. that that Bitcoin itself is it, it don't move uh, exactly it's right. It, it, but the, the 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 currency that you are comparing it against, exactly. whether it is naira, dollar, pounds, are fluctuating currencies. Yes. Go yes. ahead. So uh, with Bitcoin, uh, if you want to go for Bitcoin, I would advise you to go for it now because now is the right time for you to invest into Bitcoin because. Uh, now, the, uh, the amount of BTC is not that high that w than what someone can afford. So, if you want to go for it, go for it now. Don't wait till uh, the uh, rate is high because you, uh, I think most of the people, and I know fully well, that most of the people, uh, when they hear that, okay, Bitcoin price is now at uh, 800,000 USD, uh, 80,000 $80, USD, so they'll be like, oh, I, I have to invest in Bitcoin. <laughs> and that's not the right time for them to invest. The right time to invest is when the Bitcoin is deep. Right now is the, is the best time for them to invest in BTC. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to hear what. It's, it, that's it. <laughs> not, if you like drag people here, they will not hear. But they need to hear this. <laughs> there are only 21 million Bitcoin. You will regret it by 2030 when there are probably no Bitcoin for you to buy or it's too expensive for you to afford it. You will remember this episode or you will read it somewhere. You will painstakingly buy Bitcoin whether you are a rich man or a poor man in Nigeria. I repeat... Every wealthy billionaire in Nigeria or millionaire in Nigeria, young, old, politician will steal money. Any boy, any girl will not get Bitcoin in the next three, four, five years. Will feel very, very uncomfortable with the fiat wealth they have. Like, say, you don't get dollar now. You know how your money they useless, your naira they useless. That's how you feel. But it's going to be even more hurtful than that because there has never been a scarce asset like this in the entire world there's never been gold is very scarce right but they can still use their guns bullets and go and occupy a particular mine and start to you know they got a lot of money that they can print and and, and mine gold even though gold is scarce <laughs> you know what i mean but you can't you can't no extra bitcoin can you create there are only 21 million of it and if you don't have one, you can have some sats. It depends on what you can afford. Any amount of Bitcoin you buy belongs to you. As if you are not going to spend it is how you should keep it. Buy it like you're buying a Banana Island house or a, for a Manhattan house in New York City that you don't want to sell again, that you can rather borrow against. <laughs> Drag your ear, but you no go ear. Huh? Eh? Anyway, um, I still have my guests online from Abuja, the forensic guests. Um, I'm going to ask her a question now, but before I ask you my question, let me first ask you, what should we do to grow the infrastructure space uh, of our blockchain industry? When I say our, when I say space, I mean Niger. I'm pro-African, but... You know, this is where we are from. If it takes off in Nigeria, it will take off anywhere else in Africa. But those things are not exactly how it is now. In some Af African places, African countries, some tech innovation are taking up faster than it's taking off in Nigeria. And I don't want us to play behind. So what should we do to, to develop the human capital uh, to make sure that every household, if possible, you know, gets it to make sure that Bitcoin uh, and this blockchain crypto payment technology is accessible everywhere to make sure that um, even the government gets it. All industry gets it. it it's, it's like everyday thing, like we have our fiat payments rails so that we can actually benefit from the true uh, economic impact that uh, other clients like El Salvador that have adopted Bitcoin as legal tender is benefiting. All right. So... Um, what I would advise everyone to do, or what I would advise the government to do is uh, to introduce, as they introduce finance, I, I would advise them to introduce Bitcoin education into the educational system so that um, as, uh, children, as, as our children are growing, they'll be able to learn more about Bitcoin 
so before they get to the age of 15, 16, they will have known more about Bitcoin and that way they, there will not be anything to be scared of and they will be able to dive in without any uh, reservation for Bitcoin and uh, that way we will be able to have a um, broader ecosystem. A generation of people who are crypto savvy, Bitcoin exactly. savvy. What I hear is in the next 10, 15 years, by 2030, 2035, the children of them would probably not interact with paper money again. That's it. Yes. Right. Yes, because if you don't, if you don't, if you don't follow the trend, oh, the, the trend is going to leave you behind. It's going exactly. to leave you behind. Exactly. Like play, like play. Yes. We know they go phone booth again, go line up to dial to call somebody. Exactly. Huh? Like yes. play, like play. Nobody watches black and white television no more. You know, we know they do all those that uh, that that <laughs> telephone we they do yes. like this no more. Things are changing. We now connect on the internet. Hey, so money is going to move from paper money to, to crypto money. Yes. So in the next 10 years now, people that are 20 will be 30. People that are 10 will be 20. 30 will be 40. Exactly. And you'll be like, you'll be telling somebody, we used to spend Naira in 2023, 2024, 2025. And, and the person will be like, what is Naira? What is Naira? Uh, what I've I know is, of I've heard of Bitcoin. I've heard of maybe central bank digital currency. What is Naira? It's crazy. <laughs> All right, Shoma, are you there? Sure, we can. Okay, so um, we have been talking about what the government should be doing, what the ecosystem should be doing. Shout out to Central Bank. They lifted the, 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 the bank restrictions, that. yes. And SEC kind of aligned with CBN now with the guidelines, even though there are conversations around the guidelines that I think can still be, uh, you know, can still make things better for new entrants and, of course, young businesses. From your angle, do you think that the CBN lifting the ban, the SEC guideline, uh, is enough to grow a vibrant cryptocurrency ecosystem? Or um, are there other things that we should be doing now? I'm asking you this because you're a security, Bitcoin, uh, you're, you're a blockchain secure, forensic security specialist, and you definitely would have been seeing lapses. Uh, are there things that we should be building to, to uh, block loopholes, or are there things that we should be doing to actually boost um, economy? You have the floor. Okay, thank you so much. I think that's very important. Um, before now, I think the approach is to engage with the regulators, because what we have is two different realms coming together, the traditional finance and then the cryptocurrency realm. And there's a thin line between the two, all right? So if you try to please, regulate- Can you, Chema, please, can you adjust your face? System, Hello, Chema, hold on, hold on. Your, can you adjust your camera so I can see your face properly? Your, your, your head is getting cut off. I want to make sure. Aha, yo, wow. Hey. You're just lay, laid back, lay back a little bit, like, like somebody that just caught a crypto thief. <laughs> like, mm. <laughs> are we good? Any better? Yeah, okay. A, a little All right. more. Uh. Can we go ahead? All right, all right. Just, just let's go ahead. Just let's go ahead. Don't worry. Go ahead. We can hear your voice. So that's what's okay. important. Okay. So I said that there's a thin line between traditional finance and cryptocurrency. So the government needs to regulate it alike side along cryptocurrency because if you try to do that the same way you do the traditional finance, it will be missed. So what we're trying to do is to ensure that the government the regulators understand what cryptocurrencies are, how they move, because you can be here and we can transfer money to other countries. Cryptocurrency is not something that can actually be centralized easily or caught or managed easily. So the rules, the AML rules pertaining to cryptocurrency is quite different from that of the traditional finance. Mm -hmm. So what the regulators need to do is have what we call smart regulations and not a dumb one. And if you look at the Patel guideline, Patel is Financial Action Tax Force. They, it's more like a watchdog that guides against money laundering, terrorist financing, using cryptocurrencies. So they actually 
drafted all these things. For those, for those that don't know so what she's talking about, she's talking is, about FATF, Financial a uh, um, yes. uh, Action Tax Force, something, Act something. Tax Force. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. The global watchdog. Yes, it's a global watchdog for um against money laundering, terrorist financing. So they have actually added virtual assets, digital assets to, to it. And they have actually current private, public, or private government partnerships. All right. So what the government needs to do, what the regulator needs to do is to understand how this works and be able to regulate them. So the CPM policy, the, the self digital asset custodial rules and everything, it's the foundation. It's a nice step, but we need to go further. All right. And then by the time these rules and regulations are coming up, you will see that the vast, you will see that um, the money service businesses, the crypto exchanges will begin to align. Mm -hmm. Because what we're trying to avoid, what we're trying to avoid illicit activities. So if the government do not understand how these bad actors can use it, it will be very difficult for them to regulate it. Mm -hmm. So they need to understand it. And this information do not need to get to the bad actors. So that is why when we train, we train people, we train the law enforcement, we train the regulators, we train, we work with them, we train um, people that are, we know that can help to make sure that these regulators understand it well and that the information is passed to the right people. Because if you end up training the bad guys, you are recognizing them, you're giving them a weapon and you're, you're, you're most likely not even getting it properly. So the way forward is to continue the education. It's not going to be something that happens immediately, no. So we're not going to back down. We're going to continue. And we believe that Nigeria is already on the right track. Yes, we are. Thank you very much. Oh, when, when, when we are having interesting conversation like this, time flies. I'm going to have to bring you back, Chioma. I want to appreciate you. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, and shout out to everybody at A&D Forensics. What you guys are doing over there, uh, the old Convexity crew, um, is a big one. I'm one of the biggest fans of what you guys are doing. I'm one of the biggest critics too. So um, um, keep it up and um, definitely we will invite you back. Thank you for coming Thank on the show, Chioma. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And, uh, and, and that's how we're going to wrap it up on the show. But I, I won't let you go without uh, getting to hear your last words. Um, where do you see Nigeria... Bitcoin, cryptocurrency future in the next, uh, let's say by 2030. What do you think? Paint a picture in 30 seconds uh, as we sign out of how you think Nigeria would be uh, when it comes to adoption of Bitcoin and crypto in general. All right. So um, my fear about Nigeria is that, uh, you know, we Nigeria, when we really want to accept something, we accept it. Oh, at least, uh, so and uh, immediately we accept it. So, uh, there is this uh thing that comes with it, which is innovation. We innovate around it. Imagine when um, there was a uh, bank restricted us from using our uh card to pay international um to pay for international uh, transactions. So, yes. uh, transactions. Nigeria are innovating, they are looking for a way that they can um, find they can pay for international uh, transaction without affecting them so that their business can run smoothly so i am very sure and uh, that nigerian they are going to when nearly they accept it and uh, they must themselves in knowing more about bitcoin there is going to be a lot of innovations around it because nigeria know they agree for anybody we know they agree for anybody thank you very much um, I can't wait to see those innovations that will come uh, from Bitcoin. Whatever it is that you're building, reach out to me. I would be glad to give you a platform. I want to see what you're building on Bitcoin in insurance, in health, in agriculture, in energy. What are those innovative ideas that you have? Share with us. And pretty soon, uh, we're going to be unveiling some special stuff. Um, let me give you tits bits. We're going to be having monthly educational programs. We're going to be having conference events this year, and lots of things we've been, uh, we're going to be unveiling to you guys. So sit back. Don't go nowhere. The show has come to an end. I remain your host. I will see you same time next week. Au revoir. <laughs>